During the Ukraine war, we've seen the use of drones escalate throughout the entire conflict, with the Russians using Iranian drones to conduct mass strikes across Ukraine, and the Ukrainians using drones to take out as many Russian tanks as they can find. We've seen kamikaze drones, we've seen mine drones, we've seen all different variations. And the thing is, a lot of people are realizing these are mass producible, cheap, and very hard to intercept if they have the numbers to do so. They're much cheaper than a missile, much easier to guide into the missile and can be coordinated with local ground forces. While this is drastically changing the ground game, a lot of people are wondering if the same can apply to the naval game. And many are concerned that multi-billion dollar warships can be taken out by something worth a couple thousand dollars. Today on War Made Simple, we're gonna take a look at the United States' newest deterrence for drones and how the Navy is implementing it onto their ships. Hey guys, Bill here and Today we're going to talk about something I never ever thought we would discuss on this channel, and that is freaking lasers. Yup. The US has developed a laser-based defense system for its naval forces to intercept drones. I am not putting out some sci-fi novel, I am not making this up, because this system is from Lockheed Martin. It is the Helios laser system and it's currently deployed on one of our destroyers, which is heading over into the Pacific right now towards China, which I'm sure they're thrilled about. So what is this system? Well, Helios is the first generation of an active laser system meant for combat. There was another laser system, the one pictured behind me is LAWS, and that was developed as kind of a test bed platform in 2014. They've refined that design, and now in 2024, a decade later, they're launching the first combat laser on these ships. It works with the Arleigh Burke Flight 2A, which is kind of a, the most modern type of destroyer that we have. And you basically strap it on where the normal Sea Whiz is on the front portion of the ship and replace it with that. These systems are meant to intercept um, any sort of drone and two degree some small scale missiles. The range of power for these is 60 kilowatts to possibly 100 kilowatts, so that hasn't been confirmed. Lockheed Martin wants to get it up to 150 kilowatts. What in the world are kilowatts? Why does it matter? The more power and juice in terms of wattage you put into these things, the more they can shoot down. The cap on these is roughly going to be 150 kilowatts in terms of this model. The Navy wants to go even further in the future. So this system, at the very least, the Navy's investing heavily in. Now, why would we want a laser, and is this even a realistic weapon? Because the US Navy has used kind of unrealistic weapons in the past. The Zumwalt system is a great example of kind of a failed super project. What makes Helios different? Well, whenever you have something coming towards the ship, you have one of two options. You can either shoot it down with a missile, or you shoot it down with a close-in weapon system, or the Sea Whiz. Sea Whiz, when it comes to drone swarms, will probably run out of ammo, and it's something that the US Navy is concerned about. In terms of missiles, you don't want us to use something that's a million dollars to shoot down something that's a thousand dollars. It's not economic and you're going to run out of missiles far before you run out of drones. So this means that missiles are an effective weapon and Sea Whiz is effective, but in a limited time span. And this leaves the Helio system. So this system is basically filling that niche. It's going to be tied directly into the ship's power grid, and it doesn't require any ammo because of that. There's no separate battery bank. It's directly tied in with the ship. As long as the ship is generating power, you are able to fire this weapon. Now, what does that kind of cost whenever you fire it? Cents, like under a dollar per shot. We've never had this period, even with conventional ammo. So there's a large cost to develop this and build it up front, but it's much more reliable. It's much, much, much cheaper to use overall. And on top of that, it can go rapid fire, supposedly. So this thing will be able to take out large amounts of drones in a relatively quick time span, meaning that it's an effective weapon to counter these. Now, all this fantastic, amazing stuff does have limitations. The biggest limitation being the power supply. Our Arleigh Burke class is an old destroyer design at this point, and we're kind of tapping it out at every sort of power reserve. The new um, radar systems that we have on board these ships is taking as much power as it can get. And this is a big problem because there's very little power left for the laser. The lasers on board these ships will probably be underpowered at best. And that is just simply because the Arleigh Burke can't tap out anymore. The next problem is 
weather. If you have any sort of fog, if you have any sort of rain, the water particles in the atmosphere will disperse the light, making it less effective over distance. And this means that overall, the weapon will not be able to perform well in any sort of poor weather conditions, which limits the current range of it. So what they're doing right now is putting kind of this on as a stopgap measure on our ships until we build a purpose-built vessel for this weapon system and build a more effective version of it. Because we have one that goes up to 150 kilowatts right now, but the Navy wants one that goes up to 600 kilowatts to be able to take out pretty much anything. We're not there yet. We still got a little bit, but it is in the works. Now, the one ship class that is able to mount this weapon without issue of power is our carriers. In fact, the Gerald R. Ford class, our newest carrier design, was built specifically with mounting lasers in mind. So we might see these be deployed on the Ford class, including the next two, the JFK and the Enterprise. Ooh, Enterprise is back in the fleet. Um, but that is kind of a little bit in the unknown right now. We have to see how the weapon system performs out at sea. They're probably going to be doing both sea trials and seeing how it performs on the destroyers before mounting it on the carriers. Regardless, this is a huge leap forward in technology. Neither China nor Russia have anything near this system right now. And if this does work as an effective turn against drones, American fleets will still be able to operate with almost impunity without worrying about this. Additionally, if we're able to get into the 600 kilowatt range with these laser systems, this makes a lot of missile systems such as the Chinese DF-21 carrier killer a lot easier to intercept for the US Navy making them a lot less lethal of a weapon. This, if deployed correctly, and if it actually works as advertised, could revolutionize naval warfare and change the balance of power from a missile-based weapon system to something different. What that is, I really don't know, but we could see a massive change in naval warfare within the next decade. So, very different expectations for what I was going to post today. But you know what? Really cool topic, and I'll keep you guys in the loop if anything more happens with the Helio system. But for right now, I'm going to go ahead and sign off, and I'll see you guys next week. Enjoy your weekend.